and then the, the uh, producer of the thing told me, well, don't inhale. But by that time, it was too late. You can't help but inhale, though. You get so much smoke, right? <coughs> Anybody ever smoke a cigar? I smoke a cigar. It's not fun. You smoke it? You got high? A little bit. Yeah, it makes you high. I want to just go home and eat. <laughs> All right, one go. <laughs> yeah. I'm never forgetting the recipe. <laughs> okay, Bill, where are we? Um, and so you don't smell the odor in here, right? Okay. You don't? Nice. Good morning. Welcome to church. I'm Justin Peterson. You can get involved by going to the YouTube chat line, and Hake will uh, respond to your questions and comments. All right? Good morning, y'all. Um, so, anybody have anything on your mind before I get rolling here? Yes, sir. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, let me preface this by saying... Uh, I had one wish um, by today, and it didn't come true. Uh, it's my birthday today, and I was, my wish was that my son would accept my uh, apology by December 4th. And today is my birthday, and he hasn't accepted my apology. I was shocked uh, because, I mean, it's... 47 days, and I'm counting, of zero forgiveness, silent treatment, uh, ghosting me. And as a parent of a child or an only child, it kind of hurts. Um, I'm so shocked. I mean, I've already missed his birthday. I missed Thanksgiving. Now I miss my birthday. I mean, what's next? I'm going to miss Christmas. Is he going to hold this on for month after month after month after month? Um, I talked to somebody at work, uh, this lady, her name is Jamie. She said, oh, don't worry, Alex. I, I, uh, I, 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 I gave my dad the silent treatment for four years. I'm going, what? He goes, no, we're good buddies now. I goes, okay. And I goes, okay, fine. So I, I mean, I, <laughs> October 18th was the text oh. that did me in. So let me ask. Why not let it go? It's all about you. Why don't you let it go? I am trying to let it go. No, let it go, not try. Don't have, don't have countdown days. Don't think about it. Just you apologize for what you did. Be done with it. Why not do that for a change? Okay, but I, what I and was why thinking... Why are you talking to women about it? They don't have the answer. <laughs> They just feel your pain. No, I've talked to some guys. Some guys. Don't, I've texted don't talk some. to anybody. Let it go. It's let it go. I'm trying, but it's. You it's, know how to let it go? Uh, forgiving and forget. Forgive and forget. Yeah. Uh, but it's no, like no. Let it go. All uh, you're doing is complain about it. That's not good. I'm not complaining about it. Yes, you I, are. The, I, I, I if thought, you let it go, you would have no more to say about it. Yeah, but... No. <laughs> what do you mean, no? Let it go. I, I, okay, so my I'm son, supposed to forgive, forget about my son completely and just say, okay, I'll see you four years from now? 40 years, whenever. Or maybe never. Ah. I had to let my son go. My son was mad at me, too. And I had to let him go. And how long did that last for you? 18 years. 18 years yeah. of the silent treatment? Yeah. And did you enjoy 18 years of silent treatment? I had a ball. Uh, <laughs> you're stronger than I am. No, I just didn't. I understood. Okay. Do you have a relationship with him now? Yes. 
You do? I do. Who when? initiated, him or you? He did. That's a long time. I don't want to wait 18 years. It's not if, you, if you're not about time. I won't by. be alive in 18 years. Come on, I'll be dead. I know you're dying, but I wouldn't plan that either if I were you. Why don't okay. you just live? I'm trying to live. Come out of your head then. You're right. I am in my head. Yeah, that's where the problem is. Well, I, uh, the problem is with you. Uh, okay, I'll, send, I'll tell you what. I, no, what no, you hey, hey, no. Stop complaining about it. It'll be over. I sent him you a, a text on, for what on you forgiveness. Did. You were wrong for what you did, and you finally apologized without even really understanding why you apologized, but you apologized. Well, uh, because I didn't know how to apologize uh, uh, and uh, why to apologize. Right. Now I know that my son has the problem of no. how to forgive Don't worry and about why it, to forgive. I got to move on, but you need to set the example, not your son. So now you need to act like a father and move on. And be ghosted. Whatever that is. Or silent treatment or right. zero forgiveness. Yeah. And you love him. He doesn't need to love you. All because of a suicide text. No, all because you put his business in the street. And you were wrong. You were his father. But I did apologize a month and five days later. Okay, but I got to move on. Okay. Drop it. Drop it. It's not my best birthday wish. Right. Your birthday is not important. Well, to me it is. That's the problem. When is Jesus' birthday? December 25th. No, it's not. That's Santa's birthday, man. What the? <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> what the? So let me do this. Um, and then I'll come back to you and hear your complaints, all right? Okay. You sound like my wife. If I had one. Yes, sir. Morning, Jesse. Good morning, sir. So most people do not have love. Right. Um, Nobody does. I'm curious to hear your stance on um, it's coming close to Christmas time and a lot of people want gifts. What's your, what's your stance on that, like giving out gifts or a lot of people really want gifts? And it's well, don't like, give it to them if they want it. You give it to them if you want to give one. Because anybody that wants a gift is selfish. They well, don't guess, care about you. They just care about themselves. I guess it's my, um, maybe it's still my ego, still like, I want to give it out, maybe to make myself feel yeah. good or whatever. That's the only reason people give gifts, to make themselves feel better. Okay. They feel good when they see you smile, and if you didn't smile at the gift, then they, get, they feel bad. They get mad. He don't appreciate it. So yeah, do that this year, don't do it unless you want to. Okay. Yeah. Thank and you. do not let anyone put pressure on you to give them anything. All right? Absolutely. Amazing. Thank you. And Merry Christmas. I was, uh, I'm fortunate in that over the last 32 years, I've talked with a lot of folks and do a lot of counseling, all kinds of people on the radio show. And then I'm fortunate in that I had to watch myself too, right? And I've learned so much that it's crazy. It's like how blind we are as people. I was talking to some women, and, uh, and they wanted, you know, in the counseling thing, and they want husbands. And so I asked one woman, and then I asked a second one, and another one, and another one, why don't you have a husband? And, and one woman said, because I've never met a man that wasn't on my level. She said, every man is down at her level. And everything she feels and want, that's what he feels and want. He want from her what she want from him, and then when she give it, it end up being a mess because she feel like she can see that the man is no different than her, and she needed a man to bring her up to a higher level, but the man couldn't because he needed her, and he needed her the same way she needed him. And she said that now that she's aware of that, she can smell a weak man right away. She can see right away that he wants something from her. She's never met a man that didn't want anything from her. And she said that they always 
spend money, they buy you stuff, they say little things to you to make you feel good, and they don't realize that they don't realize that the women can see a weakness in a man that does that, that treat them a certain way like they're special. And she said she has gotten with men and kept some of them at times thinking that, well, maybe I can make them better. And I'm, so I asked her, well, how did you think you can make someone better if, you're on the, if, they're on the same, if you're on the same level as they are? And they're on the same level as you. You can't bring them up if both of you are on the same level. And she said she realized that. But her thoughts made her think that she could bring them up to a different level. But, and I talked to another woman to ask, and this woman lived in another country, and she told me that she and all of her female friends and, mo- and women that she know hate men. They detect men. They just, they can't stand them because men have nothing to offer. They always want something. They have never met a man that have not needed them and demanded that she come into his world because he's in the same world that she's in. And they know how to make men feel like they're doing the right thing, but women hate men that is in their world. And all men are in their world. They have not risen to a higher standard. They're in a woman's world, and they are needing the woman as much as she needs him, and so the battle starts when they get together because nobody can bring one up. So I told the woman, you got to not rely on the man because the man is weak. You got to seek the kingdom of God, drop your anger so you don't need him in that way because as long as you need him, that's what you got to find. And I said, there's nothing wrong with wanting a husband, but not wanting a husband should be the last thing on your list. After you do like 154 things done, then you can want one. Because as long as you want one, you're going to get one on your level. You're just going to have the battle going. Men are as emotional and insecure as women. And I'm like, wow. And so I've been watching my thoughts. And what I realize about thoughts is that all they ever do is repeat themselves. They're repetitive. They don't give you anything new. They have tried, they will pretend to be giving you a new situation, but the outcome is still the same. The outcome is what it is. The outcome turned out to be the same because thoughts are on a very low level and they can only give you low level thinking and feelings and desires and things like that. <clears throat> and except for the few who are truly seeking and have forgiven, they're still on that lower level of thinking. All thoughts are all lies all the time about anything. And the issue is not someone else at all. The issue is the thoughts. It's never anyone else. It's the thoughts. And if you can overcome the thoughts, everything else would just, that lower level of thinking and being would disappear. I, um, I've talked to several people about this, so it's not just one person. Uh, on these jobs now, they have, oh, do I want to tell you that? Yeah, I'll tell you this first. On the job, they have drag queens and lesbians and everything out in the forefront now, right? And they are teaching employees how to, you've got to do the he, she thing, whatever. Right? Yeah, I'm going to hit that. And, uh, <laughs> and I've had people call my show about this too. Well, what do I do on my job? How do I stay there? Do I leave? And I tell them, you stay until another opportunity to come for you to leave. And if you're feeling anything about the environment, it's your fault and not theirs. Because you're there to do a job. And in the world, the world that we live in, everybody got problems. No matter where you go to work, you're going to run into the devil. Everybody, including you, got problems. Things going on with you, right? So it's not like something you run away from. And so I imagine... And I'm so, so don't leave your job. If you feel a certain way about what's happening there, it's not your job. It's not even the drag queen or the lesbian or whatever. It's you. Because you have no been judging others to be feeling something. If you never judge, you will never feel anything. If you never had an opinion, you can see what's wrong, but you ain't got to be feeling about it. 
and, and if you don't judge it as right or wrong, then you would never have a feeling about it. You can't feel. So I thought about Jesus. I woke up this morning with my mind set on Jesus. <laughs> and so I thought about him. And when Jesus, the son of God, was sent into the earth, the whole world was corrupt. There was nothing but Satan's children. And so every vice and everything you can think of was happening. As it is now until you overcome by forgiving and start to rise out of the darkness of your imagination, right? But just think, have you ever thought about that? When Jesus came to the earth, everybody was a sinner, meaning that they hated one another, they tried to hurt one another, they had vices, every human being, as they do now because all human beings are born into vices, mad world. And I thought to myself, if Jesus was into judging, if he was into emotions, he wouldn't have been able to help anyone. Do you know that Jesus had no emotions at all about anybody or anything? And that's why he never got mad when people tried to hurt him, when they lied on him, when they tried to hurt him, even when they put him on the cross. He didn't feel anything about it. He felt for them that they couldn't see because if they could see, they would not have put him on the cross. They would not have tried to hurt him. But he had no emotion, so he had to go out and heal the sick. The sick being people who have fallen away from God, who are possessed by the devil. And he knew that they were possessed by the devil. And he never judged them because he, he knew it wasn't them. It was the devil in them. And that's why he said that we should pray for one another, not try to hurt one another, because it's not us or them. It's the, the devil that made a home in them, just as he made a home in you. And so he had no feelings. He had none. And I'm telling you, as a witness, when you truly overcome anger, you overcome judgment. You overcome feelings. And then the, the light will destroy the, the devil that made a home in you. You're truly possessed. It's not you. Anytime, you should be glad, glad meaning happy to see it. If somebody can make you feel a certain way, you shouldn't get mad at them about it. You should be glad to see it because it's a sign that you, your ego is still in operation and you should want it. And then once you see it, you should go to it, not run away from it, but go into the storm and relax in it and feel it so you can go through it and be done with it. They're really doing you a favor. And so I was thinking, like, over the years, I have not, I've counted with, I've counted with all kinds of people, really. I really have, but I didn't know I was, I didn't understand, but I just knew I didn't resent the people because I, I didn't have the hatred in my heart anymore, and I knew that he couldn't help it, right? But I've counseled with homophobites, men and women who cheated, homosexual, lesbian, people who hate one another, and they will all have the same suffering, they have the same thoughts, they have the same feeling. Ain't nothing different because it's of the devil. It's of the devil. And so you got, if you want to be free, and you can, you got to rise above that by keeping your eyes on those thoughts so that you can overcome the thoughts. The thoughts are your problem because the thoughts are of the devil. And Christ never, he told us, hey, y'all, pray for your brother. Love your enemy. And love your enemy, you got to not hate them. But the only way you're going to be able to love your enemy and pray for your enemy. How many people here ever prayed for their enemies? Oh, a few have. Good. But you got to not feel anything about your enemy because they're no different than you. And you men, you need to work on yourself because women need men that don't want them, that don't need them at all, that demand that you you got to come into my world. I'm not coming down into yours. You have to come into my world or no world at all. We won't be together. But if you need anything from them, period, you can't bring them in your world. Isn't that something? Women need men to be men. They don't need men that cater to them and buying them drinks and buying them food and Oh, honey, 
they know all you're doing. Is, really, they know you're stupid. They know you're weak. They know that all you're trying to do is get something from them. Either a good feeling or for them to make you feel like you're a man or sex. They know. They won't say it sometimes, but they know it. They smell you and they hate you. <laughs> they do. They hate. Women literally, and I, so I've been asking them just to make sure. I already knew women hated men, right? But just to make sure, they're like, yeah. I can tell a weak man the moment I see him, they say. They could be in a bar somewhere at a party, and the way a man look at them, they know that that's a weak man. Ain't that something? The way he look across the room at them, they say they know he could be had. He's weak. And they can get you to buy them 10 drinks at the bar because you think you're going to get something and they won't give it to you, and now you're mad. <laughs> I spent all my money on you at the bar, but I ain't asked you to do that. It was your secret as to what you wanted. Yeah. So, and the reason this is so important because it's spirit to spirit. We are a spirit created in the image of God, right? And this faith spirit, everybody got that until you overcome it. And so these two devils working together, they know what's going on. Except for the men are so dumb, they don't know they're being played sometimes. Mm -hmm. But the women know. They know. They, and they are hungry for a real man that don't want them. They don't want them. They need that. And so, ladies, y'all got to forgive and go straight to God. Because especially nowadays, the men ain't got it. They don't have it. They'll say they do, but they don't. And y'all know they don't. And so you need to start telling them, you don't have it. Anytime a man caters to a woman, he's telling her that he's weak. And anytime you listen to your thoughts, you're worshiping the devil. Because all thoughts, I don't care, even when you're in a bad situation, right? And you, feel, you realize this is a bad situation. And you finally get out of it. Only thing the thought is going to do is put you into another bad situation. It's still the same thing because you're still on the same level. You have not, you have not risen above the thoughts. You got to pay attention to yourself. Our battle is truly a spiritual battle. And Christ, he never tried to hurt anyone because he was on a higher level. And when you're on that level of real love, not emotional love, not ego love, you will never hurt your fellow man. You will pray for your fellow man. You will pray for your husband. You will pray for your wife. You would not try to hurt your wife. You would never fight with her. You would never fight with her. Because you would, you'd be on a different level. It would be impossible to get angry if things didn't go your way because you would not have a way. A lot of people don't believe that life will happen on its own. It will happen. It doesn't need your help. And the more you pay attention to you and overcome that fallen state and rise above it, and you can't rise above it. And it's not you that's doing it. It's the light of God that's bringing you above that. The, all your ideas and plans and little feelings and everything will disappear. They will disappear. You can't have an idea and think God's going to help you. If you have ideas and plans of your own, Satan's going to help you. And they won't work out well. Amazing, huh? <laughs> I've been so fortunate in that I've been able to hold meetings forever and, and talk to people and just pay attention to, to myself and to them. Another thing, too, you foolish if a title means anything to you. A title, I'm looking at these people like, oh, I'm a doctor. I'm a lawyer. I'm a preacher, I'm a this. That doesn't mean anything. It's all ego, too. It's just a title. It's not who you are at all. It doesn't solve your problems. Inwardly, it doesn't solve your problems. It doesn't take you to heaven. It doesn't take away your conflict. It doesn't do anything. It just gives you a false feeling. It's just a dumb title. It has no meaning. All that needs to disappear as well. And we all need to be treated the same. With perfect love. Okay, this amazing. Isn't that amazing? <laughs>
<clears throat> one laugh and then I'll take your hand. Um, I was thinking about feelings. And so I'm listening and paying attention. Uh, you've heard that people think dogs love them, right? They think dogs and cats love them. They really believe that. Oh, my dog love me. They kissing the dog in the mouth. The dog like, what the? <laughs> the dog like, I don't feel any love for you. That you on my level feel the love for me. I don't feel love for you. And you're thinking that I feel love, and I don't. The dog don't feel love for you, or the cat, or the snake, or the rats. People got all kinds of pets. You're on their level. And it's the same level that men feel for women. That same love. It's the exact same love. It's the same love because it's a fallen emotional love. It's not real. It's the same love that two men or two women feel for one another. What they feel is the same love that men and women feel for one another. It's the same thing. If you doubt me, ask them, what do you feel for one another? Oh, I love them. They make me feel good. They love me too. I just feel warm and fuzzy. And as soon as they get mad, what do you feel now? I hate them. I hate them. They say the same thing. And what does a dog do if you rub in its belly and it's tired of you rubbing? It'll bite at you. It's mad. Just like heterosexual people do with one another, cats do it to the, to the parents, whatever y'all. To the, uh, yeah. And, and homosexual, lesbian do it to one another. It's the same feelings because it's hate, it's not love. Have you ever thought about that before? All you have to do is ask them, well, what do you feel for this guy? I love him. I feel the same thing. And so you ask the woman and the man, which y'all feel, it's the same kind of thing because it's all ego. It's not real love. Look at the Christians. The Christian can pretend they love you because the Lord said I should love you. So I love you. And the moment they disagree, what do they do? They snap at you. Because that, it's the same love that everybody's supposed to have for one another, but it's not real love. Have you ever thought about that? It's not real love. You got to overcome that love. It's like the father was saying about his son. The father did the son wrong by putting his son business out there in the street. And now the son doesn't want to talk to him. The father should realize, you know what? I'm his father. I put his private business in the street. He came to me with it. And I emailed it out to everybody. Texted. Same thing. No wonder... Um, he doesn't like me. I was wrong. And go to the son. Son, I was wrong. I'm sorry. And then be done with it. And if the son wants to talk, fine. If he doesn't, understand why the son doesn't want to talk because he, he hasn't overcome that fallen state yet. You mean my son? Uh-huh. <laughs> and so instead of wondering, why does he call me for my birthday? What about Christmas? That's selfish ego stuff. It's not about the son, it's about the father. If you want what he wants. You can rise above this, but you got to work on yourself. And God made it possible for us to be in the world, but not of it. So you could be at work and not affected by what's happening inside of other people because all that mess that they're feeling is happening in them. It has nothing to do with you. So that's what it means to be in the world, but not of it. As long as you don't judge your fellow man because whatever they are doing is happening inside of them. It's not happening like with you creating a computer. You're there to, whatever you do, make a computer, write a report. What does write a report have to do with the way someone feel? That's their problem, not yours. You're there to do a job, and at the end of the day, you clock out, you go home. And you whistle people well because you know they cannot see. But if you're of it, they'll make you leave your job before time. I mean, all you'll do is walk into another situation that's even worse because you haven't dealt with this situation right, so you're not prepared for the next situation because you didn't overcome that one. And what I'm sharing with you is what I've learned about me, too. And that's the only way I know it. 
I'm learning about me. And you can overcome. Christ came that we may overcome. And Christ went amongst the world. He went amongst the children of the devil. All kinds of diseases and everything. And he healed them. You're supposed to be the light of the world if you're truly born again, right? Of the light. So you're the light of the world. So wherever your job is and whatever is going on around you inside of other people, let your light shine in there by not being judgmental, by not overreacting. And somebody ain't going to see amongst all those groups that, because a lot of people don't, don't, don't like what's going on. They are too afraid to speak up. But somebody going to see how you're dealing with it. They're like, wow, you're not really, you don't seem angry or worried about this. You're not judging the people. What's the secret? Then you can point them to the light. But if you are in there overreacting to the darkness in the way they can, how can you point them to the light? How can you go out? How, if, the, if there's no, nothing but darkness in the world, how are you going to, we need, God needs the light to go out into the world. And if you are nothing but darkness in the world, and here you are angry and emotional and carrying on too, there ain't no light going into the world. You're in different locations because you're the light. The light can't be in the same location, meaning that it has to spread out. And it works through people just like the darkness does. Amazing. Isn't that interesting? It's so interesting to me. But you can know the truth and don't hold on to the truth. Don't remember it because the intellect is of the devil and how you quote the, the truth what you think the truth is. And it's not doing anything for you at all because it's just intellectual. And the devil will quote the truth to you and have you out there saying it as though you know it. But you're not aware of yourself enough to see that nothing has really changed about you. You still angry. You still have fear. You still have doubt. You still worry. You still this and that. And if you don't love every human being on earth, God sent his only begotten son because he loved all. He didn't pick out the ones he wanted to love and the ones he didn't love. He loved all. And if you don't love all, you love none. You're no better than anyone else. Amazing, huh? Why are y'all so quiet? <laughs> and the truth is inside of you, though. I'm telling you. And... It's, it's amazing how the truth is inside of us. I'm mind-blowing by it. But you got to die from the ego. Let me take this young lady first. I'm sorry? Oh, you know, am I right about how women see men? Oh, yeah. Secretly see men? Yeah, we can see it in my love. Yeah. yeah. And why don't they tell the man right then and there? You know what? I already know the answer to this. I know you buy me this drink. You don't love me. I know why you buy me this drink. Because they're getting something from it, you know what I mean? So what? They're getting something from it. Yeah. So on the same level. Yeah. So they're not gonna tell you, man. They're playing you. <laughs> they don't care about you, and you don't care about them. Mm -hmm. And then they they they're really looking for a man that can bring them into his world. But the men are in the woman's world. They haven't overcome mama yet. They have been born of the spirit of God. So ladies, y'all don't have to wait for that. You can go to God, too, by forgiving. And then maybe he'll come up to your world. You don't have to divorce him, but just don't hate him. So you can rise up to God's level, you know, to the light. And maybe you can bring him up there with you. Because he ain't going to bring you up there with him. He's down there with you. Getting played. The men don't even know they're getting played. They think they're being a man when they're really being a woman. Trying to get... Anytime you try to get even a feeling from the woman, you're weak. If you try to, oh, just feel good. <laughs> you're weak, and she knows it. And then she hates you. Yes, sir. Anybody disagree with any of this? I want to hear it, too. I agree with it. Okay. Yes, sir. So I was thinking about what you were saying. Um, Lady, y'all about... don't need no husband. Don't worry about no husband. <laughs> Let that be the last thing on your checkoff list. All right? Okay. So I was thinking about Christians and, like, um, 
before even when I thought I was a Christian, Speak what I noticed. From the chest. Okay, I noticed that um, a lot of people who think they're Christians are just like all the other religions in the world. Yeah. Um, because what they're doing is they're tr trying to pretend and be like Christ, and they don't have that perpetual spring of water that's flowing from within them. They don't right. have the love of God within them, and they haven't yet been birthed of God. And so they just go around and pretend to be Buddha, or they try to get into these different religions to try to raise themselves up. Yeah. But they haven't been transformed from the inside out. And it's the same thing that happens with the Christians as well. Yeah. You can be, you call yourself a Christian, but if you haven't forgiven, you haven't been renewed and transformed. You must be born of the spirit, not of the religion. You must be born of the spirit. We are a spirit, and we must be born of the spirit. And you can't make that happen. You just have to see that it's not that way yet. And when it becomes that way, you will know it. I'm telling you. I used to be a beta, beta, beta male. Emotional and all that kind of crap, right? A lot of that stuff is gone now. And I can see if I do get into it at all, I see I believe the thought. And now that I see now that I believe the thought, it disappears. And I've learned by realizing that I have to take the pain of the thought, not to run from it, not to take a pill because somebody say I have HTD and all that crap, right? Here's a pill. You can't run away from it. You got to run into the storm and endure it and just endure it. And what I notice is that when you endure with consciousness, you can endure it when you, and you'll get over it. But if you try to endure it in an unconscious way, you won't make it. Because the consciousness is the light of God, right? And you're going through the darkness, so you'll break through the darkness if you're conscious. It's like sitting down eating a meal, and I told you when you eat, try to remember why you're eating. And if you eat in consciousness, you eat differently. But the food puts you to sleep right away. If you're not aware, you forget. And so you, they say, you know, you feel full, ready to go to sleep if you're black. <laughs> and you wonder, well, I, I didn't know I was going to eat all that. And you, you're unconscious. So you got to practice consciousness. You got to work on you. You have work to do. You got to work on you. Anyway, I saw some hands. Yes. So how does one go through it in a conscious way, but not also dwell on it, and you brought up an example of how your thoughts could put you in a bad situation, and then if you put it away, it could just do it again all over again. Yeah. So how does one endure, but also keep in their mind that all thoughts are all lies all the time about anything? Um, when you first start out, it's going to be hard, because you have identified with the wrong, the spirit in you, thinking that it's you, and so it's going to be hard to do that but do it a little bit at a time, and eventually it lasts, you, you stay in the light longer and longer and longer, and then eventually it'll be gone totally. Would a, good time to, would, a, would a good time to engage in such activity, quote unquote, be during like silent, silent prayer? During or? the silent prayer of when a situation happens, mm. let's say that something happened, you get a shock from it. You're like, well, in that moment, relax in the shock. Up in here, relax in it. And it's going to be difficult because it feels like you're dying, feel like you're hurting, but you're not. Mm. And just go through it instead of running away from it. Try to deny it or run away. Mm. Just go through the shock anyway. Because the, the shock can happen anytime, at work or at home or anytime. A shock can happen. And just be aware the shock has happened and instead of running away from that, stay with it mm. as much as possible. And in the beginning, you won't because it'll seem like it's too much for you to handle. Mm. So you go back into a state of unconsciousness. Mm. But a little bit of taking it will remind you that, wow, that was interesting. Because yeah. you're going to get wisdom from it. You're going to gain wisdom. And so the next time another shock comes, you're more prepared to deal with it. Mm. Right, and you would be technically staying in the present. Like you wouldn't be dwelling on it for like the whole week. You know, you would no. just you would take it right then and there, 
And then as life just goes on, if it happens again... The one thing I can absolutely assure you, once you take it and go through it, you forget it. Mm. You don't dwell on it anymore. Mm. Because it's as though it never happened to you. Mm. And in reality, it didn't happen to you. Mm. It happened to the not you that you thought were you, Mm. the ego. It did not happen to you. So once you truly, truly go through it, forget, you do forget it. You don't Mm. dwell on it. And you'll see the person the next day, and it'll be like nothing ever happened. And if they're in their mind, they're going to think you're going to be mad at them when you see them. Mm. They're going to think, oh, why how they going to be acting, right? Mm. Uh, and then you'll see them, and you're not thinking anything about it, and they're still on it. Mm. And you're like, what the? Hmm. Yeah. I was going to say, uh, how, do I, how do I phrase this? Um, Along that line of, of subject, one topic that had come up to me this week was this idea of being cunning, where um, I, I, I engaged in an activity where I saw some signs up that were anti-Christian. They were promoting abortion and vaccination stuff, and so I did something to where I took all those signs down, right? But I, did, but I did it in such a way that was like optically pleasing, or no one could really catch me if someone had caught me. And someone did technically catch me, and they confronted me about it. Yeah. And the way that they did it, I really wanted to hurt them in, yeah. that, in that moment. And what was really funny was in that shock, I thought to myself, wait a minute, I'm actually kind of glad somebody said something. Because I am doing an activity that would look weird to somebody seeing something, yeah. right? But in the opportunity of being cunning, you know, I was sort of disguised in a way, and I you know, made, said fake names and engaged in a way that reminded me of when Jesus was being persecuted and he kind of disappeared into the crowd. Or even when Paul was being persecuted, they had snuck him out of a, of a city. And I'm not exactly trying to use that to justify it, but it was just something that had come up. And, I, and, and with light of everything you just said, would you think as a, as a Christian, as a lover of God and, and what you're saying with a light, should we be our authentic selves 100% of the time or when certain situations call for, like, hey, this is too much, kind of like when you overwater a plant, so to speak. Like how, I don't know if I'm making any sense. Did but. you apologize for taking down those people's signs? No. You're evil. Mm. You're no different than them. Mm. Because you had no business taking down their signs, mm. number one. And that wasn't being Christian-like. Mm. That's all ego. Mm. Jesus would have never taken down the sign. Mm. You don't care about the sign. It's a spirit. Mm. And, uh, and that's what Christians do. They think they're better. And they think they have an idea of what Jesus was about. And any idea about Jesus or God are all wrong. Because all ideas about Jesus or God come from a thought. And all thoughts are all lies all the time. Mm. And so you're reacting on a thought. Why do you apologize? Well, it was something that I had prayed about immediately. The person who had confronted me wasn't exactly looking for an apology. There well, why more. did you? You knew you were wrong. They didn't need to be looking for it. Like, oh, yeah, you know what? I shouldn't be doing this. I'm wrong. Mm. Why? And that's what you would have done? Sure. I mean, to be 100% real with you, what I was thinking was this, what they're promoting is evil. And I figured, right, and I'm playing their game. I, I did make that decision. So how were you promoting anything better? You were no different than them. What I was thinking of in that immediate moment, right, right, in that immediate moment, especially when I got confronted, was sort of like if I had saw somebody get bullied. Get what? Get bullied in any type of way. I don't know if that's pushing, shoving, someone being, right. you know, someone, someone taking from another person. And if I were to stand there and not react, and not in a, an emotional way, I guess it might be, but, you know, to where I would be standing up for what I believe to be right in that moment, um, I was thinking, you know what? If, if, if they put up signs and nobody does anything about it, well, then it just continues to happen. And it was in a neighborhood and in a part of where I live, and so it kind of affected me, I guess, a little bit more personally than you. That is but. so interesting. I love that you're saying that because mm. a lot is in it. Yeah. But first, Doug want to respond to it. And, and what? Oh. <laughs> he want to respond oh. to what you just said? No, keep the mic. Oh, okay. Yes, yeah. Not sure what I wanted to respond to, but what I did notice in his talking is that he was thinking. Everything he said, he, he, what I was thinking at the time, or when the guy confronted me, I was thinking about 
everything he did, it, it was in his head about it. Yeah. And that's where he yeah. had an idea. That's where he thought that, as you said, he was better than, uh, because I'm a Christian, I'm better than this. And, and put this is up. wrong, and yeah. I need to prove that it's wrong, and nobody else gets to do anything. This is my world. Absolutely. You would know better than that person, and you were in the imagination carrying out the order of the devil, orders of the devil, thinking that you're doing it of God because you read about Christ in the Bible. So say like, yeah, God would never allow that. Mm. And so you think you're doing it, not knowing you're listening to thoughts. Mm. And the thoughts uh, are, are using the Bible against you. Mm. The thoughts are all lies about anything, even about the Bible. Don't you, get me you wrong. You don't have an sure. idea how Christ would be. Mm. And that's Christ lived in the present. Mm -hmm. And so he didn't think, oh, if I'm walking down the road, I see a sign. What am I going to do? Mm -hmm. Or if I see someone bullying someone, I know how I'm going to handle that. He lived in the present. He didn't live in what if. You know what I mean? Sure. But, and Satan lived in the what if. He lived in the past or the so-called future. So he planned. He made you plan what you're going to do. And everything you do is wrong. Mm. You got to live in the present. Sure. And you can't plan on, oh, if somebody bullying somebody, I'm going to, you know, and I'm there and I'm, uh uh. No, it's true. I totally agree with it. And, and to respond to what the gentleman just said, I completely agree that in that moment of being confronted and kind of like you said, that shock moment where I was kind of like, man, what am I really doing here? Am I playing their game or am I playing mine? Like, I don't understand. I did feel self-righteous. I, yeah, I did feel that. Absolutely. But there was this aspect of like, man, like how are we just supposed to walk and just kind of take it? Like there's, there's kind of that moment, in, and I get like I'm kind of entering ego territory. Yes. Where it's like how much as Christians can we really take? I mean, this was almost as if they're promoting the death of babies and, and, and pro this and basically. Well, all that is from the devil. Really. All that thinking is from the devil. You can't think how a Christian can act or be. You have to be. Life is a being. He, and that's what's going to happen as you overcome thinking. You're just going to become a being, and life will just happen. And you don't have to do all, oh, what about they killing babies? What am I supposed to do? What am I supposed to do? Nothing. The Christians trying to save the world, but they're losing because they are not saved. The world is here. Mm. We are the world. So with that train of thought, and I'm not no way trying then, to uh, this. I know you sure. have some more to add. I'll come back to you. Totally. I just noticed that as we keep peeling this onion, yeah, it's right. just like, whoa. Yeah, no and problem. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Yeah. Um, but with that sort of mentality, I mean, are we also then, you know, not supposed to vote, not supposed to fight back? I mean, what about Christian leadership? I mean, we're clearly seeing in, in this world that the people who run this country don't know God, don't love God. And so it's almost as if, as Christians, I understand we're supposed to be in this world, but what would you say to a Christian senator, a Christian teacher, who has the opportunity to enforce, not necessarily force people to Christianity, but to force, I guess you would say, good, to perpetuate, like, hey, what you're doing is wrong. Because you're saying, hey, we're just supposed to be, we're supposed to be in the present. But it's also kind of like, well, wait a minute. For those who are in positions of, I guess you could say, authority, who are blessed with that, should we not also use this as an opportunity to basically undo what the evil people have done. Never listen. Well, you can listen to a person, authority, authority, whatever you say, but let it go out of one ear, in one ear, out the other. You become your own man and be led by the light. Mm. These people of authority don't have no idea what they're doing. And they have the same problem you have. And they'll believe in the intellect and they are for themselves. They are not for you at all. It's all about them. So, and don't think of anyone as being authority over you. Put no man over you. Right. Authority, the title authority is just a word mm. that, will, that will cause you to go unconscious and treat somebody else differently than you would treat yourself. Mm. It's just a word. It has no meaning. Just don't hate them. I would love to respond to that, but I think I've had the mic for a little too long. No, go ahead. I was it, oh, wait, hold on. Sure, sure. No, I'll come to you right after him. Don't forget your thought. Go ahead. With that being said, then why are you moving to Orlando, Florida? What? Why are you moving to Orlando, Florida then? Is well, it not to get at away first from... It, because of all the mess that was going on, but I'm not forcing it to happen. 
if it doesn't happen, fine. And so much has changed since then in ways that I never imagined. And so if it happens, we'll do it. If it doesn't, we won't. But it, it, it's amazing what's going on right now. Mm. And so he's taking care of us right now. Mm. And so I don't feel that desire to, to go right now. Mm. You know, things are so high, too. You know, mm. it's not a good time to buy and all kind of stuff happening. Mm. But we're being treated so well here that it's like nothing ever happened. Mm. Right. Because my main point, I'm not trying to, aha, you know, no, anything like no, that. No, no, I'm, no. No, I'm part of that. Just yeah. Mainly it's just like, hey, like people who don't know God, who hate God, all this, have made L.A. what it used to be. And I believe you said you came here in the 60s, right? Yeah. And it's completely different. 68. And I'm thinking, well, like, hey, as Christians, wouldn't it make sense to just get in the car and go back the other way, you know? Well, and, see, you're thinking wrong. Mm. You should be thinking as Christians. Or, You should sure. be thinking as this or as that or authority. Have no thoughts. Take no thought about tomorrow. The people who are on the run, they're running because they're into the thought. Oh, the country falling apart. Let me run over here. And then they go over there. The same hell that is in them is now over there with them. Mm. It never left them. Mm. You know what I mean? Sure. Do you understand? You, into, you got all these identities. You got to overcome identity. You got to overcome the idea of being a Christian. Mm. That shouldn't be an idea. You got to overcome how I'm going to handle this and handle that. And Satan a, a, a thoughts. He, God revealed to you and Satan talked to you. All thoughts, all lies, all the time about anything. So then how does one communicate with God? Nice. <laughs> By being still. Really. Because you don't know how to communicate with him. You don't know what you want. You don't know what to pray for. You don't know what you need. Of yourself, you can do nothing. How are you going to communicate when you don't know what you want? Mm. Like, oh, God, let me, let me see. I want to tell you what I want, but I really don't know what I want. I know. Give me an extra pair of shoes. I'm sure. You know, you, it, be still. He already know everything. So stop communicating like that. Mm. You're only worshiping the devil. You really communicate with the devil. Ask for anything in my name and you shall receive it. And then you jump over to the book of John. It's like, well, the reason why you haven't received is because you, you don't realize that your mind is somewhere totally apart from God. And it's like, if I don't know, I, I can't help but feel, and I'm sorry, I'm going to use it again. It's just right. only for conversation. As a Christian, you know, to want to pray for my family uniting and wanting to do it, you know, God's way and for God's will. I mean, I can understand being still, but it, it, it's, it's, it's information that, Hearing it for the first time is sort of hard to comprehend. Yeah. Right. What does it mean, ask for what you want and you shall receive it? To me, I can't help but believe that by praying to the Lord, saying, I want to do this in your name. No different than the conversation about the gifts, where it's like, Lord, I want to do this for you. It's, there, I, there's no ego involved. And I truly have felt the Lord has blessed me with those opportunities because they've come out of nowhere. And I'm like, oh, it's, 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 it's an answered prayer. So you really think that when that verse said that it meant materially? Not, not 100%, no. Do you really think it meant ask to God to keep your family together? Uh, not 100%, but it felt like a moment where our family could have been united much stronger, and I was, I was just praying to the Lord, hey, Lord, could you please use me for an opportunity to unite? It wasn't ego you, or... And, and, and again, just be yourself. So you think that God wouldn't already know to use you in a, in, a, in a situation if he needed to? I 100% agree with what you're saying. So why do you need to ask him to do that? I can't help but feel it's almost as if, then what's the point of prayer? You know, if God already knows everything, I, I, it's in my mind, then why would I even bother praying? And I'll I can't rest my case. Mm. He's very smart. He cool. said, don't take any thoughts for those things. Any thoughts. And if you're trying to keep your family together, why would it tell you, uh, and let's say you got married, you're supposed to take your wife and go far away from your family. Right. Uh, and why would it, like with his mama, Mary, would bother him, be like, Mary, go sit down. Right. Mama, 100%. leave me alone, mama. But then what does pray without seizing mean? To be a present, to be aware. To not be unconscious. To be 
remember I told you guys to keep your mind with your body, wherever your body is, to be present with God. That's what it means. To always be aware. I appreciate it. Thank what do you think sir. about that? I love it. It, may, it makes sense to me, and I believe what you said earlier about just going through it. Yeah. I don't expect myself to grasp it 100% right now. Right. But over Absolutely. time. Are you, you doing know. the silent prayer? Yes. Morning and night? Yes. Every day? Absolutely. Stay with him. And still do you little hoover and holler? <laughs> Lord, save my mama. Keep my family together. Use me, Lord. <laughs> and then be still and know him. Yes, sir. All right, do both until you see the right way. Thank you. Yeah. Yes, Frank. I mean, uh, not Frank, but uh, Doug. What was it? Basically, it was about um, his, he had these ideas, if I see someone get bullied, but how do you know someone's getting bullied? We just went through a whole summer of watching a video about somebody dying, and the whole world was turned upside down in a, in a way, right? Because we think we know what happened in that video. Yeah. We think we were, we're we, we see a video and we act like we're right there in the middle of it, and we have literally no idea. And yet responding and reacting to it like it happened to us. We were right there, we know what happened, and we feel it and react to it as though we were there. You know what I mean? That's a good point. Y'all have no idea how deceiving thoughts are. How cunning. I like that word cunning that you use. Because one woman told me she can, she's very cunning and that she can see when a man is being cunning. She see it, the way he act, the way he treat her, and the way he t want to take care of her, and the way he worship her. While he's acting like he's not doing it, he's just being a gentleman, right? But she can see him being cunning because she's cunning, and they're both on the same level, she can tell. Isn't that amazing? Yes. Uh, right. The, 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 the cunning idea that I had was uh, the Bible verse of when it's to be gentle as doves, to be, but to be uh, cunning as snakes, or I, I, can't, I can't think of it, but there was this opportunity of, um, like I said, 100% authentic. But, but, yeah, but yeah, until you go and take down somebody else's science, <laughs> unless it's on your yard or something, or your building. Yeah, right. You know what I mean? Right. The whole cunning aspect was, I think... Uh, for anyone who, who, who saw what happened to the people in, uh, on J6, you know, um, th like their whole lives were turned around. I mean, they were using their cell phones against them, camera footage, everything. And I was thinking like, okay, so, you know, when it came to taking down these signs, you know, I was wearing a hat, I was wearing glasses, wearing a mask, wearing this, wearing that. And the whole idea of being cunning was it's just like, hey, you know, it's like you want to try and catch me, all right, well, you know, give it a shot. If those people had not been angry and overreacting, they wouldn't have ended up in that situation. Because when you have anger in your, in your imagination, you walk right into a situation. Mm. You, don't, you don't see what you're doing. Mm. And so that's why you have to stay present so you can see mm. what's going on. But if you're not present with God, you're, in, you're with the devil, you're in your imagination. And you cannot see. You could be looking at a situation and won't even understand it. Because the devil would be interpreting the situation. Mm. You will not understand it. And you think you know, and you take sides because you think you know what's going on, and you don't. You know what I mean? Because that person's in their mind, too, and this person that they're fighting with or whatever's happening in their mind, and they both are, are working each other, and you're on the outside looking at it, and, this, and the devil working your mind, and he'll make you take sides with somebody, and it'll be the wrong side because you didn't see what was going on. You can be right there and not see it. You can watch your sister get beat up by her husband, thrown up against the wall, nose bleeding, and she crying, and the devil like, wow, that guy hit her. Your brother-in-law hit your sister, and you go and beat up your brother-in-law, and the sister wouldn't cause the thing to happen. She brought it up on herself. But you identify with the sister and the action, and the devil work your mind with it. Because the world taught you to protect the woman and then your sister get up and you try to protect. You say, okay, I'm going to call the cop on this man. And she'll get mad at you for calling the cops. Mm. I love him. Why you put my husband in jail? 
I love him. Well, he beat you. That's fine. That ain't your business. Right. It seems he like you have to take me. truly every situation right at face value. And like I said, you really can't interpret it. Um, yeah. And yeah. So I appreciate it. Absolutely. Amazing. Huh? Consciousness is everything. The mind is dark and wicked. It'll make you feel insecure and doubtful and all kinds of stuff. Let me take here first because he's been waiting for a long time. Did you have a question? No, I wanted there to comment. On oh, okay. So one of the things that I've realized from being out here the past couple of days is that it's one thing to be present because you can be present and that satisfies your ego because you can just be in the moment, like you get lost in what's happening externally. But it's another thing to then be conscious about that yeah. and then wonder, why do I even like this stuff? Why am I even getting a feeling from it? So that I lived in that place before I ever found you and, and came to all that. It's like I had the faith to say, all right, I need to live here in that conscious place to help me overcome the stuff. Yeah. And I didn't, I didn't know what it was at the time, but like living through that faith brought me to it. <sighs> and then now coming to realize like that's how you communicate with God. Like it's not the, you know, jumping out and saying all the things and being loud about it. It's. When you're in those moments and you stay still, you see what to do, and it's just it's there. Yeah. And then it's like, okay, I you do, I don't need to be too present with what I'm doing, because I get lost in it. And then you don't realize like thoughts are you're being controlled by the thoughts when you're you're not aware of that. What happens is when you are conscious, the real consciousness, when you're really there, when you're out of the imagination, the the dark world disappear, the fake world disappear. And all you have is reality. That's all is there is reality. All your little emotions disappear, all your wants and your desires and your ideas, everything really disappear. But as soon as you go back into this mind, it all come back. It is an illusion. It's not even, it's not even real. That's what's so weird about it. The devil is making you beat yourself up and beat up others by judging and trying to hurt one another and jealousy and everything. And it's not even real. We've been bought and paid for. We are home and don't know it. it's been done. That's why I tell you, you got to get rid of all your little authority figures and people ain't, it's just a name, it's just a title. So like what you were saying before about in the workplace, if you stay conscious, you I mean, if you stay still and you stay quiet, the devil will tell you, oh, you're boring. People are thinking you don't know what you're doing. You know, you don't know what you're doing. You're stupid. You're this. But right. that's actually the strongest place to be because then you look at who you're working with and you realize, wow, you really can't help yourself. Yes. And then you, you get caught in situations where they try to talk about other people to yeah. you or they try to get you to do something that's not within your roles and responsibilities. And then when you stay still, you could just say, no, that's not me. That's for you to do. But you don't get a feeling out of it. Nothing out of it. And then you it. just move on to the next thing and you know, yeah. forget about it. Absolutely. Um, thank you. Um, I, I was walking down the road the other day and I saw some drag queens. One big fat white one and a big fat black one. They were in dresses and stuff. And I looked at them and I'm like, wow, the devil has consumed them. They really believe and feel like they're women. And the weird thing about it, they have the feeling of a woman. Even men have the feeling of a woman. Emotional feeling, which is not of hers, but the devil that made a home in her. But when you feel emotional and stuff, that's the feeling of a woman. That's why it's so easy to be put on a dress. You see some of these actors, right? It's easy for them to put on a What's that one name uh, that has Tyler Perry? It's easy for Tyler Perry to put on a dress and act like a woman. Because that spirit is there. Yeah, the dress is inside. <laughs> And that's why we can't judge one another, because you know better. You get the same feelings. You get the same thoughts and the same feelings. That's why you must be born of the Spirit of God. Be born of the Spirit, not the religion. You must be born of the Spirit. You are a spirit. Anyway, yes, Frankie. So um, what happened with me uh, about being still, I was doing some plumbing um, yesterday, some plumbing work, some physical work. And so um, um, the plumber was actually, he was checking me because I said, well, how did this get broken? And I wonder how this pipe is clogged and which way direction it's going. And I'm all in my mind about it, right? 
And he just kind of yelled at me. He says, doesn't matter how it happened. Doesn't matter when it happened. Only thing that matters is how do you fix it right now? Yeah. You're hurting my head by asking me all these questions of what's going on with the pipe. It's kind of like when the father was talking about the son. Well, why don't he call me on my birthday? And hey, well, what about this? I'm waiting for Christmas. Yeah, uh, he won't even listen. He, he won't wasting, even hear himself you're wasting because your he's unconscious. You're wasting your time and wasting yeah. your energy. Uh, the devil is tricking you, and he's causing you anguish and frustration when there is enough anguish and frustration to fix it yeah. and just put all 100% focus. So when I did that, I came out of that, it was fixed. Yeah, it absolutely. Fixed. I want you all to watch how you feel and how you think. And, and so you can come out of that. And, and don't ever, from this day forward, blame anyone else for what you feel and think. Wife, don't blame husband. Husband, don't blame wife. And be glad to see that in you so you can overcome it. Be glad to see it. And when it happens, go to it and relax it. And don't treat the people bad just because you're feeling bad. It's not their fault that you're feeling this way. It was already in you. They didn't like bring it home, bring it to work from home and dump it inside of you and make you feel that way. You were already that way. So stop blaming. And everybody blaming, everybody nowadays. The blacks hate the Jews. They want to be a Jew. The Jews hate the Allah. And the Allah hate the this. And the whites hate the this. And the one religion is better than that religion. One, you fight over stupid stuff. It's just you and the devil. Anytime you have to prove anything to anyone, you know something wrong with you. You don't have to prove anything. Amazing, right? Okay. Um, yes. In the live chat, Average Joe asks, should you ever apologize for telling the truth? Should you ever apologize for telling the truth? Yeah. Because if you think you have, a, have to apologize for telling the truth, it means that you have lied. You have told what you thought the truth was. Because when you just, the truth is love, right? And the truth is not intent to hurt, it's to enlighten you and to cause you to wake up. And so if you of love, you never think about, well, do I need to apologize for being of love? If you're real love. But if you think about, oh, I hurt that person's feeling, I need to apologize, that meant you were intentionally trying to hurt their feelings. Because there is no guilt in, in truth. And the truth only comes from God in the present. It's not planned. It doesn't think about tomorrow or yesterday. It doesn't know what it's going to say until it needs to say it. Isn't that amazing? It doesn't know ahead of time what it needs to say. It doesn't know I'm going to be driving down the park and there are a bunch of abortion signs to kill your children and, oh, you got to go out there and pull them up. Because if you get the heart right, the people won't have the abortions. They're only having the abortion because they're feeling what you're feeling. They're feeling better than you. you the drag queens, they're only acting out the way they are because they know you hate them. And they're trying to get you back because they hate you. And just like you try to get at each other because you hate one another. It's the same spirit. The drag queen are dragging out because they know the Christians hate them. Christians don't love drag queens. Christians don't love the woman that has an abortion. And they know it. That's why they have tons of abortions. Because the ego want to defeat the other ego. Okay, you hate me for having an abortion? I'm going to have three of them tonight. Okay, you hate me because I wear a dress? I'm going to put on a gown tonight. Come over to your house. <laughs> but if you had real love, they wouldn't do it. Because it's two devils fighting one another, all in the name of Jesus. Isn't that amazing? That's why you're not defeating the, the, the dressers. Uh, and that's why you're sending your kids to the public school, because you just like them. 
You want an ego trip too? Anyway, I see so many hands. Yes, James. One more, <coughs> one more uh, super chat from Taking Care of Business on Odyssey. Super chat. So if the love for a woman that bears your children and is your wife is the same as the love for caring for a cat or a dog, when is it true love? Is the only true love the love for God? That's a really good question. And Nick want to respond to it first, and then I'll put my two cents in. That's an amazing question. I know I see your hand. I'm going to get to the hands. Yes. Yeah, the true love, huh? You know, it's <laughs> like you're asking me to speak on something that, that you can't be glib about in your own life because um, it goes way deeper than you think. So when you say things like, oh, uh, um, when you don't need her, when you don't feel anything, yeah, those are all true. But, but like really, it, it's really that. It's like your feelings about what you're, your feelings about what you're uh, experiencing with another person is if that's a lie, then when you don't have that, is then the only thing that's left is what's true. Yeah. So, just have a just like really just it's that examination of yourself. So, and, and don't be glib about it. Like, even if it's it's like you've heard Jesse say ninety nine and a half. So, <laughs> you got to go all the way. That's right. So, you feel anything? All those things. Real yeah. love is when you love her with no feelings. Real love is no feelings at all, because if you have feelings, you have an outer need or outer want. But in no feeling, and that's what I'm telling you, God, Christ was not into the feeling. He had real love. And when you rise above the thoughts, the ego, you're going to have real love for your wife and your children, and it will last until death do your part. And if the wife didn't rise up with you, and she decided to leave, okay, bye. You want the kids? Take them too. Because you can take it or leave it. Your identity does not come from that. Not at all. You wouldn't be feeling bad or good if the kids left with mama. But the only way you feel bad when the kids leave with mama because you have the raw identity with the kids. You get your ego fulfillment thinking that you're a great father and a great mother and a great this, and you're not. And the kids grow up and hate you for it later because you gave them all this emotional love and it was never real. You wanted something back from them. You wanted it to feel good or act right so I'll look right. Speak up so I can, I, I sound like I'm teaching you well. Something. Say hi, say bye, say thank you. It's all selfish, but the real love don't expect anything because there's, there are no feelings. Christ had no feelings. Christ came and, and pointed you back to the right way so you can overcome feelings. Feelings are of the devil. Look at the world. Look at your life and look at the way things are happening. Look at your friends and your family. They all screwed up out of feelings. Feelings are from the devil. They are evil because they come from the darkness of the imagination. All right, what I'm going to do is move a little fast. I see so many hands. And uh, let me just go here, then here, and then there, and then all the way around. Yes, sir. <laughs> Did you have your hand? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, I wanted to respond to what you were saying about... Uh, how drag queens will wear, you know, do, do their thing because, you know, they know that Christians hate them. Totally agree with that. Same thing with the abortion yep. um, idea. And I could see it's the, the same the, thing with Jeffrey Domery. It's the same thing with evil. It's just evil, period. And evil love fighting with evil. So it'll do things if the Christians hate the, the drag queen. Now, it doesn't mean you're accepting it as a right. You're not accepting it as a right. You're just not hating it because you know the person is driven by evil and they can't help themselves. It's not them, but the spirit that made a home in them. Right. But the Christians don't see that. Right. There's definitely a validation coming from the evil side of yeah. getting them riled up. And it's, just, it's like, hey, look at my fans or whatever, how they feel about it. Yeah. Um, but I guess my response to that, and it sort of ties into what I was commenting earlier, was that imagine if you had put in laws to make you know, abortion illegal in the first place to where even if they wanted to get you back and try to get some type of emotional response from you, it's like, well, what do we do? Sorry, I just use it again. But as Christians to where, how do we prevent that from even happening? 
because it's all because I'm starting to recognize that there's a big what you're trying to say is is hey focus on you within. You got to focus on you and take your eyes off everybody else. But I but I realize from that it's like okay. Um, Cause look at you moving the signs. Right, right, right. I was actually about to quote Heavy D saying, now that we found love, what are we going to do with it? Where it's almost as if I can't help but think it's just like, wait, okay, so if I have love for the unborn, why would I not want to persuade or put laws forward to make that illegal in the first place? And you even brought up an idea of like, how oh, blacks hate the whites and this and that, where it's kind of like, hey, wait a minute, how do we, I know that we're in the world, but we're not of the world. So with that being said, wouldn't it make sense to make this world or facilitate the process of loving basically what you're trying to tell us much more easier. You if know? you overcome the fallen state, you will overcome the world and you will see how to do that. But how do we influence then, the world is sort of what I'm kind of... By being at. the light of the world. Mm. So, but, but, but with that being said, we shouldn't fight for, I don't know, I guess you could say like as far as like government wise. Uh, you, should, you know, we have a government, right? And we need the government a little bit to make the roads right. To blah blah blah, and you should vote in men that's gonna stand up for that real love and not the fake emotional love like what we have now in the government. Because the government, the representatives of the government are no different than you. They're possessed with evil as well, and their whole plan is not about you. It's about them. Mm -hmm. They don't care about you at all, as you didn't care about the people that you took their signs down. You didn't care about those people at all. It was about you, and you felt like a Christian, and, 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 and I'm doing the right thing. I'm like Jesus, right? It was all about that. I don't know if I 100% thought that, but, you know, <laughs> right, right. And that's why you couldn't admit, you know what, I'm sorry, I shouldn't take your signs out. Mm. Well, it, but, but the thing is, and this is the last thing I'll say, and there's a ton of other questions, was more or less it's kind of like, okay, wait a minute. They took, God's, they took God out of the school. They took praying out of the school. Well, what happens if we were to put it back in? And I totally agree where it's just like, hey, there's no point of being so outwardly of love. If they put God internet. back in, it'll still be messed up. Mm. It'll still be messed up because it'll just be all intellect about God. That's why they were able to take it out because of more intellect than insight about him. Just like look at the, look at the Christians right now. The Christians are as bad as the atheists. They are anti-God. Anyone that has anger is antichrist. Even if they do go down to the front of the church. If you have anger, you're a murderer. If you have anger, you're antichrist. If you don't pray for your enemy, but wish your enemy and not wish them well, which is prayer, then you're antichrist. If you try to hurt those who hurt you, you're antichrist. They know the Bible, but they're still anti-God. They don't know God. Look at how they treat one another. They don't pray for one another. They used to in the good old days. They would pray for one another. You leave that child alone. You pray for that child. Don't leave that child alone. That child works on life. But now they're going to do that. So well, I appreciate it. Fear. Thank you. All right. Why are you raising your hand like Hitler? <laughs> yes. If you notice... Most Christian churches won't even won't even protest abortion themselves. Right. They'll they'll let, they don't care about it. We I know that one for a fact that they they don't care about it and yeah. the Christian church don't even love the women of the church. They let them become preachers. <laughs> All in the name of Jesus. And the reason they let them become preachers, they're afraid of them. They want money. They want to feel good. And that emotion, which is of Satan, feel better than anything else. And they pretend they're doing it in the name of God when they're really not. They won't even correct the women. But they know God. They know the Bible. They know about God, but they don't know God. They're nothing like Christ. Zero. You're supposed to pray for your enemy. You're supposed to and again, it doesn't mean you're accepting wrong as a right. You're discerning it, and you see that as wrong. But you also see what's driving the person that causes them to do these things, and you know it's not them. And then you will see how to deal with it, with love and not hate. Anyway, I'm going to move fast now. Did you have your hand in it? Okay. You did? 
Okay. Right here, the white shirt first, and then the black shirt, and then all over here. Yes. Um, so you, you make a good point about, like, if we were to introduce God back into school, that it would still be messed up, right? If we forced God back into school at this juncture, we would get the same reaction of what you're describing with, say, the drag queens, and you judge, they judge back, right? Um, we need, like, a wholesale... Like, the, the people that make the government need to want that collectively, um, or it'll be rejected, similarly to the idea of the signs. And we think, oh, by electing these people who will put in these policies that everyone must obey, we're going to get people back to God. When you've talked about how where we're at now, to you, it looks like the best bet and the advice you're giving people is look at yourself and start the only way to go. fixing home base because that's where it's going to go outward yeah. from there. And I think uh, an important thing See to... See the kingdom within. He didn't tell you to look out there for the kingdom. And in all honesty, the government we elected is us. They're just like us. Mm -hmm. We elect the kind of people to run our government that we are. We elect angry people. If a man stood up that was of God, really, of righteousness, he rose okay. above the situation, we would stone him. We wouldn't elect him. He's too mean. He's too upfront. Mm -hmm. He doesn't care how you feel. He put the country first. He's this and he's that, right? We'll stone him because he wouldn't be feeling and thinking like us. And we would think that he's the enemy. You won't, as long as you in that fallen state, you're going to only elect people in a fallen state. You're not going to elect the real deal. And then if you do elect one habit to get by and you elect the real deal, if he does or says anything that you disagree with in your father's state, you're ready to throw him out. Oh, he said that he's, he's okay with abortion. He's doing everything else fine, right? But he's okay with abortion, no problem, right? Now you're ready to throw him out. Well, what about all the other stuff he did to make the country great? Oh, that don't matter. He <laughs> disagreed with one thing I agree with. He disagreed with it. He got to go. Oh, you dummy. <laughs> right. Ain't that dumb? Isn't that like dumb? <laughs> well, you, uh, let me ask you, young lady, what do you think about that? What do I think about it? Yeah. Um, I don't really think about it. You don't think about it? No. And so what do you think about what you've heard today? Um, just the continued message that all thoughts are all lies all the time. And, that and they, they run deep. I had no idea the thoughts are all ego. You want to get to a point of no thinking. No thoughts. You want a life of knowing and not thinking. And the only way you're going to get to that, you got to die through it. And it's the hardest thing to do because we've identified with it for so long with all our ideas and our plans and the way things should go and what we want and, and blah, 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 and how we see ourselves and how we see others and how we see God. You don't even know what God is like. You have no idea. I hear the Christians say, oh, I'm going to be Christ-like. Yeah, right. <laughs> but it's like once you let go, then you are free and you truly see. When you let go of the thoughts, when you die from thoughts, you're free. Yep. Everything begins with a thought. And all thoughts are from hell. None of them are from God. Have you ever thought about that? I have many times. You pay attention to your thoughts? I do. Yeah. All right. Okay. Can I ask you one more thing? Maybe real fast. Yeah, it's quick. Yeah, real fast. With, um, with regards to the abortion stuff or, or any of that, uh, the signs, I, I was wondering if you think there's a difference here. You see the signs. We already went over what his situation was. But the, you know, the Christians <laughs> want to come out to condemn the drag queens or condemn the people going to get abortions. And I wonder, I see that that's a reaction to evil, right? It's not actually love. Real fast for the question. For the it's, what, what would you say to someone who, right, you want to defend the unborn, but that would to me be going out in your own thought of, I want to go defend and speak on the unborn, not I want to go tear down signs, go put up your own what's, signs. What's go, the question real fast? Is there a difference between I'm going to go out today and put up signs that are pro, uh, you know, like, or against abortion that are pro the unborn, as opposed to I'm going to react and take these signs down? I wouldn't make a decision to go put up a sign. I will let it be made for me because putting up one sign against somebody else's signs are just two devils fighting. My sign better than your sign. 
you, you want to kill the baby. I want to keep the baby. I'm better than you. That's what these rallies are all about. It's just egos out there fighting one another. But if it starts and both from a place sides of love. trying to prove that they are better than the other. Point the people back to overcoming the fallen state, all that mess we're in. But if it starts with love, would you see it as something good, right? I come out to, to say something that I believe from a place of love. Maybe I'm driven to do it by something higher than myself. You come to yell at me about how you want to abort children, and I say, well, I love you either way. I'm just saying this because this is what I want to say. I'm driven to say this today, not in a reaction to anything else, but just because I want to speak for the unborn. I don't I hate quite you. understand that question. Okay, well. No, no, I just don't, not that no, it's wrong. No, I, just I know, <laughs> yeah. Because what it is, when you truly wake up, you stop arguing with the devil. Absolutely. You, you, you don't try to prove anything. You stop arguing with the devil inside of you and inside of others. You'd know if you were doing it in the right way, basically. Yes. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Yes, Nick. No, I just, oh. I, you got Okay, it. in the black. Uh, Man, it's, <coughs> it's, it's gone, just like that. Yeah. What the? Uh, earlier, yes. earlier you mentioned that uh, about titles, authority is just a title. The person in, in authority is just a per, just a human person. But uh, doesn't the Bible say that we have to follow the laws of the land wherever we're at? Uh, I mean, it's a title, but it's a title that we have to, uh, res you know, respect. You know, I mean, and you will, as long as you don't have hatred in your in your mm -hmm. mind, your heart, you're going to do the right thing anyway. Because I mean, the jails are full of people who think. Oh, the cop is just a title, you know. That's why they're locked up, right? I mean, no, they didn't they're, respect they're that title, it, you know. Right, because they're angry. They can't see what they're doing. And yeah. so you need to lock them up. And, and they used to have it where you're locked up. You have time to think about what you've done. Mm -hmm. You have to work hard. You have to earn it, right? But now they get them color TV, <laughs> great meals. And so yeah. they come out the same way. Good health care and all they, that. Right. They didn't have the downtime. Yeah. Yeah, so they have to lock them up. Otherwise, they'll do what we see happening now until they come to consciousness. Okay, uh, Raymond, then you. I'll it, make this quick. Okay. Okay, it, uh, it happened at a time when I visited a friend of my sister for Thanksgiving dinner. Her, uh, okay, yeah, this friend had a, a giant a white German sh uh, shepherd that, uh, that she keeps as a pet. Well, when, uh, when, she, uh, when the dog was around my sister, he doesn't react. He, uh, he's comfortable with her, but when he was around me, he violently started barking at me as if he senses my fear, the fear within me. Yeah. If a dog like that is sitting, uh, if a, my fear is so great, a uh, dog can sense it. I was wondering uh, what it would be like when I'm around any type of human being. So, uh, or do I have to watch my own fear? I don't understand that question, man. <laughs> okay, should I? Okay, I'll make it short. Should I be aware of my own fear? Yes. Mm -hmm. Don't be aware of the doubt fear. Be aware of your fear, mm -hmm. because you. In the only way you have fear, you're in your mind, in a in a thought, and the thoughts bring on a feeling of fear or doubt or worry or something. So watch you and not the dog. Okay. Who let the dogs out? <laughs> So the uh, saying is true. Forget the, uh, never mind the dog. Beware of the owner. Th that's right. That's right. That's deep. That's right. Absolutely. Yes, sir. So I have a question because a lot of people are talking about it. So what's the definition of evil? Like, what is the definition of evil? Thoughts and emotions. Thoughts and emotions. Okay. There's a quote here. Um, just one second, I'll read it. It's a short one about evil. It says, the only thing necessary for the triumph of evil is for good men to do nothing. And it's by the 18th century Irish philosopher and statement, Ed Edmund Burke. Do you believe in that or not? Yeah, because when you work on you and you overcome evil, you're going to do something. And it's going to be the right thing. So, so okay, so... So good men should fight evil. When they overcome evil. Overcome evil within themselves? You fight it within yourself by overcoming it, by becoming aware of what's going on inside of you, and you will overcome evil. Okay, but how do men define evil? Like, what is the definition of evil? Oh, you said thoughts and feelings. And Sorry. Yeah. Yeah, right. 
so there's, that's the universal, I guess, meaning of evil, overcoming your thoughts and feelings, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay, okay. Uh, all right, right here. Yes, ma'am, what do you think about all this? Um, I was thinking about the sign the most. And I about was just what? Like, Speak up from your chest. I was thinking about the sign um, story the most, and yeah. I was just thinking, wow, like we've all had that moment. And I was just relating to that moment of like where you think that you're, you're trying to stand up for what's right, and that balance of not knowing as a Christian how much is too much. And yeah, yeah, just hearing what you had to say about that really stuck with me today. Right on. Because the only way, you, you don't even know what's right when you live in your imagination. You're going about what you've been taught what was right, right? And that's going to always turn out wrong. That's why God said, let no man teach you. Because they're just teaching you about what, the evil is the, the knowledge of good and evil. The knowledge of it is evil. And so you want to be shown in the present, and you want to do it with perfect love, not with trying to prove that you're a Christian and that you live better than they are, and, and they try to prove to you that they are better than you. It's just devils arguing. That's why you should never argue with the devil. Never argue with the devil. Um, yes, James, last word. I think I got everybody hand, right, for the most part? Okay. Um, Pine Cone asked a question in the live chat that, man, I'm blanking on it. Oh, you kind of answered it, but is it wrong to want to or try to be like Jesus? Yes. Because you can't be like Jesus. You, I mean, you can't try to be it and be it. You overcome evil, you're like, you're like your brother. You're of love. Christ was of love. He wasn't trying to be like anybody. Because it's spiritual, so you can't try to be like him. If you don't know him, how are you going to be like him? How are you going to try to be like somebody you don't even know? Even when they were worshiping him, he's like, no, it's not me. It's the Father in me. I'm your brother. Whatever I own, you own it too. We own the world. But you just don't know it because you live in your imagination. You try, you're fighting trying to get something that you already own. He said that everything he owned, we own it too. Is that in the scriptures or Whatever I own, you own it. We are family. You already own it. You're fighting for the wrong things. Overcome thought, you overcome the world. And you will never have another worry. Amazing, huh? It, did you have your hand? No? You did have it? Earlier, but you no, I'm playing. Any, anything I've said that anybody disagree with, that you, uh, one quick disagreement. You disagree? Uh, you, you know, uh, you said that no one can be like Jesus, right? Right. Uh, you can't. You can't. Act, you can't be like him yeah. until you overcome the thoughts, and then you will be like him. You'll be of love. Uh, but you can't make yourself be like him. Uh huh. Uh, what you think he said go and forgive right yes okay uh but don't ask for forgiveness because humans don't forgive right so why should we forgive if we're all humans and we don't forgive so are we lying to ourselves by forgiving or how is that when uh, you admit and can see that you're wrong for hating yeah that's but that's not so but humans don't forgive so it's not real forgiveness it's just admitting that we're wrong when you can see that you're wrong for judging a fellow man then that's what forgiveness is Mm -hmm. Because you judged them, you're playing God, you think you're better. And you don't see what's going on inside yourself, so you don't see what's going on in them, so you judge them. Now you feel better about being wrong. Mm -hmm. All right, yeah. Uh, that, uh, yeah. <laughs> you can't go, only God forgive when we admit that we're wrong. He forgive us. That's why he said that if you have anything against someone, meaning if you resent them, Go and apologize for resenting them. I've been playing God. I'm sorry for judging you. And then he will forgive us. And what he does is take away the spirit of the devil from us because it's not us that's doing that. It's the devil in us. Yeah, because, you know, I've always, you know, growing up, you know, I grew up 
Catholic, and uh, it's I've always been told that Jesus came to because it give us the example of how we should live. Right. So isn't that so? If we follow everything he says, and isn't that being like him, like following you, his yeah, example? You, you, you will follow what he did when you overcome the world, when you overcome the imagination. You, you will do exactly what he did. You won't argue with the, you know that Jesus never argued with the devil? No, no. He told the devil, get behind me, and he was done with it. He never argued with the devil. So you never try to prove anything to anyone. You don't argue with the devil. He no. never argued. He just went about the world, healing folks, being the light, and blah, blah, blah. He didn't care. He didn't pay attention. Everybody else paying attention to what the devil was doing and saying, but he went on with his life. Mm -hmm. We should be that way. But you can't be that way until you overcome the world. And you overcome the world by overcoming the darkness of the imagination. Because yeah, if you heart. argue, it's like, it's like a game of ping pong that never ends, right? Going back we, and forth, arguing. Yeah, you know? <laughs> that's right. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh oh. -uh. No. Yeah, real fast. <laughs> so essentially, what we're doing is we're always uh, keeping our relationship with the Father perfect. So when I hurt my brother, I go and apologize for him for hurting him. And he also apologizes to God for hating me for hurting him. So we're all just saying I'm sorry to God because all offenses actually are offense against God. When I yeah, hurt you, you, you admitted that you have sin yes. by hating, right? Playing God. So all our offenses are really an offense to God. It and, is yes. because what it does is separate you from Him. Yes. Because when you're of the devil, anyone that has anger is of the devil. You let me imagine that you're of the devil. You're not gonna like God. You can't even get into the kingdom. You can't do anything. It's only when you overcome the devil by admitting you're wrong for hating, for judging. Last word, James. Oh, and then Hassan, I want to ask you a real quick question. Uh, somebody, one of your members on the Bond YouTube asked, requested the, a sneak peek on your thoughts on the Ye, Kanye thing. On Kanye, yeah? Uh -huh. Kanye West thing? Yeah. I don't know because I, I don't know what the real truth is because I haven't talked to him one-on-one, -on -one, but I do know that God loves everybody. He doesn't love you in the condition that you're in, but he loves everyone. And we, if we have love, if we love God with all our heart, soul, and might, there's not one person that we don't love. We love all. We love all. But I don't really know, because I don't know, there's just so much stuff going on about him now. I don't know what the real truth is. I just don't know. Kanye, I mean Kanye. Uh, uh, what do you think about the doll love thing? No different than the people and everything. It's, like, it's the same thing as when you love a woman. Absolutely. It makes sense? Yeah. Uh, it was so many things you said today. It's funny because every week I tell you, man, that was the best church. <laughs> and every week it just is better. Yeah. But there's so many things you said today that in alliance with in the line with that it's true it's like we we go down to the animalistic nature yeah and that's why we think that oh they love us and this and that and it is that that's the same want and need for a wife or a whatever when two men or two women say they love one another they're talking about your kind of love they do feel that it's the same thing and you get mad, you don't love, no you don't. A man can't love a man, a woman can't. You, you can't love a woman either, and a woman can't love you. And just in closing, it made me think about a couple weeks ago, I mean, I feel like we've been going, this has been a run on with the abandonment thing, but, uh, and I remember I had answered that abandonment question, and it made me think about uh, in a relationship, like abandoning somebody, and I felt the pain from it of like, oh, maybe they, they think I'm abandoning them. That's that, the devil. Right. And that pain, I realized it was me abandoning the ego. And the ego was like, come back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Amazing. Yes, Doug, last word. I didn't have my hand up. Oh, I saw you wondering. <laughs> <laughs> Did you have something else, James? Okay. Amazing. Any doubt or any questions about anything that was said? What do you think about all this, what I said today? <laughs> I'm just trying to take you all in. Any of that you're like, whoa, that don't make sense. <laughs> no, 
No, just just trying to save it all. Right. Yeah. Can you tell when a man is weak? Yeah. Yeah, you can smell it. I was going to add to that earlier. So, like, um, I work at a high-end restaurant, and um, so I get to see lots of different, like, um, couples that come in all the time, like, going on dates or whatever or having dinner. Yeah. And you can spot it a mile off. Like, most of us all now, like, as servers have, like, we will laugh about it amongst ourselves because we get to see how the guys are operating, how the women are operating. Yeah. We see a lot of, like, sugar daddy stuff and, like, a whole bunch of other stuff. <laughs> and it's just really funny, like, <laughs> when you can tell, like, we can tell if they're on their first date, their second yep. date, or they've been married for a while, how they communicate, how they order. Just, like, it's just it's interesting to watch. I'm telling you, a woman can be out with her boyfriend or husband, and he can pretend he's looking at her. You just looking at her the whole twenty four hour day together. And a woman walks in the room and his eyes go like that. <laughs> <laughs> and she'll catch it. Oh, yeah. I saw you looking at him at her. Why are you looking at her? I didn't look at her. Yes, you did. Your eye went like that. She won't miss it. Isn't that true? And like and she ran to fight over you don't love me, you love that woman, you looking at her. The woman just walked through the room. But the man is looking at the woman because he's thinking, wow, I'd like to be with that one. <laughs> you know, he, look, he with his woman. Uh, pr another pretty one walked by according to what his beauty is. He's thinking, yeah, I'd like to get with that. Wow, she's fine. <laughs> they don't be one, y'all. They just want whatever come by. Uh, even when you go dancing with women, and you act like you're into dancing and you're feeling all over the woman while you're there. She know what you're doing. She'll be laughing at like, oh, you're just dancing. You ain't feeling on me. Well, she know you're feeling on her. You're trying to get something from her, a good little feel. And you're pretending you're into dancing. <laughs> Isn't that something? Play the game. Everybody on the same level. So they know. So men, you got to rise up so you can bring the woman up to your level. Come into, bring her into your world, you're not in her world. And ladies, it ain't going to happen anytime soon, so don't wait. <laughs> don't wait on your husband, your boyfriend, or anything. You go and forgive. You do the silent prayer so you can overcome thoughts. And you'll rise up to the higher level of consciousness as well of God. And you shall know God. You really will. And be willing to stand alone. Be willing to stand alone. Be your own man, your own woman. You got to stop identifying with the crowd. You're still going to be able to talk with people, hang out, but you won't identify. And yet, you'll be fine. All right, so I know this is your first time here because you're at the meeting. You had your hands up real fast. I was going to say the flip side. Oh, hold on side. a minute. No. Yeah. The flip side. Sorry. Okay, hold on. <laughs> the flip side to that is when, you, when I go out to you, like last night, you can sense when the woman who is a server is also trying to get something out of you, which Absolutely. is the tip or everything else, and she's flirting with me, and I just kind of stare at her, and I look at her, and, you know, she's just trying to egg the conversation on, yeah. keep it straightforward, this is what I want, don't ask questions, like, I'm not here for, you know, me to entertain you, like, if you give me a good service, and you keep my food coming in, and it's fine, you'll get a tip. Yeah. Other than that stuff, I don't need it. Nice. And that's, that's the flip side to it. Oh, amazing. So listen, right now, when you're in your thoughts, you're on the same level. No and it's going to always turn out the same, no matter what. All you're doing is repeat the same old thing. You're just from one drug addict to another, one whatever to another. It's not going to change until you rise. So keep your eyes on yourself. You want to change the world? You change it within first. Pray for one another. Don't try to hurt. If you have love, anybody that's trying to hurt you, just know that your enemy, they have no love. And you pray for them. Don't try to hurt them back. You pray for them. They are possessed. We are possessed in the mind with spirits. The spirit of sex, the spirit of drugs, the spirit of alcohol, the spirit of judgment, the spirits, and they are wicked spirits. And they can, you can overcome. When you go and forgive, the power of love will destroy it for you. You can't do it yourself. Of ourselves, we can do nothing, and of ourselves, we know nothing. Thank you all so much. Uh, I hope this was helpful to you out there in the, in the world. And uh, do the silent prayer. Become your own man, your own woman. If you want to receive your Christmas stuff on time, you need to order it now. And we do sign all the books and everything. We get them out as quickly as possible. All right. 
So do the silent prayer, be still and know. Thank you all. This was amazing today. I appreciate it. Yeah. I appreciate it. So...